Hello everybody, this is My Dear Hatchetman, which is an 18 plus game. If you are not above 18, please do not continue watching this, and if you are above 18, please enjoy watching this. Um, start. <coughs> what is your name? Type it in and press enter. Putting in Lucy. So I kind of wanted to play a Yandere game to see what all the hubbulu is about, you know? So, Lucy. Enter. What is your gender? Female. Your gender is female, is that okay? Yeah. It was somewhat of an old habit of mine to walk. Every night I walked. Due to the consistency of my routine, walking has helped me to put my mind at ease and numb out the fresh, cool nights. Besides, it was a good source to wear me down before bed. I don't have to rely on sleeping meds as much. I guess that's a pretty good alternative. There was nothing fun about laying in bed and having my eyes glued to the ceiling and disassociating. I've become so familiar with the past staring at the same damaged sidewalk, hitting a couple of pebbles with the tip of my shoes. I would usually disappear into the woods for 20 minutes or so. I wouldn't call myself a nature lover per se. Hell, I could not imagine myself abandoning my phone. But at night, the woods were all I wanted. I don't know why, but this has been the only place that gave me motivation to move, to get out of bed. College hasn't been too kind to me, and having just moved out of my own just recently made me feel all the more isolated. Was there something wrong with me? No. Taking little walks to relax at night to sleep is normal. I mean, I haven't done that, but okay. I never strayed from my path. It's practically become burned into my memory, and I was kind of proud of that. It was like my own little secret hideout, where if I could one day just disappear from it all, however, today I feel bold. So, I wandered off my usual path, heading to the wild. Oh, you're crazy, crazy, okay. Oh, look at the stars. At first, the new environment felt nice. Without noticing, time kind of flew by and all my sense of direction withered away. I now find myself confused and alone in the woods. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I couldn't recognize any noticeable landmarks to help my way out. Oh, how funny is this? I feel like finally the girl of a camp piece slasher movie being tracked down by the killer. I'm not saying that again. I am so stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Of course I was going to end up lost. Great. Now only, not only am I lost, it's dark, no stars, only the faint light of the moon. Not doing much help, but I am losing sleep as we know it. I can feel the soles of my feet starting to ache. Perhaps now might be a good time to collect myself before I have a full-blown meltdown in the middle of the woods. I lay my head low, feeling a heavy weight on me, and took a few deep breaths. I'm going to cry, because that's very realistic. Too late. I couldn't help it, but feel warm. Frustrating tears run down my face. I let out a few soft sobs, forcing myself to stay as quiet as possible. For God's sake, I really don't know where the heck I am. Snap. The deafening silence was erupted by what seemed like a twig? What the heck made that sound? I jumped, startled. I took a few steps back, nearly losing my balance. Wherever that sound came from, I didn't see anything. Aw, don't cry. A muffled voice came behind me. I quickly turn around and see a person. Oh, he's cute. I still couldn't make out his features well. His hair was wild, sticking out from the top of his head. He was holding something, a hatchet. Am I about to get murdered? My muscles tensed up as I prepared to make a break for it. He seemed to notice my mannerism. Hey. He held up his hands, letting the hatchet slip from his fingers. Now why'd you do that? And into the grass. Why'd you let it go? His movements were slow and harmless. Take it easy. Who the heck are you? Just some guy trying to help you out. That's it. That wasn't very comforting at all, especially now that he reached over to the ground, retrieving his hatchet and casually swung it over my shoulder. Why'd you pick it back up? Why the heck did he sneak up to me like that? Why was he in the woods? Has he been following me? Where did he even come from? I live here, actually. Just a couple of miles. Got my own place and everything. Why do you have an axe? Also, I wasn't crying. It's a hatchet. Sure. <laughs> Are you gonna murder me? What? No, I was getting some firewood. It is starting to get cold around here. 
I was still trying to come down from the adrenaline. I didn't even notice the chilly breeze. I started connecting the dots. He was probably telling the truth. I am not at all experienced in forest living. Who am I to tell him that he doesn't know what he's talking about? So, why exactly did you come here? Well, you want to get out of here, don't you? I know my way around. How you know I want to get out, huh? <laughs> Maybe I am being too paranoid. He doesn't seem like he has any intention of hurting someone. I mean, besides, you know, his looks like uh, he got a little bit of scars and stuff. You know what? No, I'm sorry. You, let me not judge a book by its cover here. See, Lucy, not everyone is out to get you. Just follow him. I mean, I, I wouldn't follow him, but okay. So he can take you back home. In case you're still skeptical, you can go behind me. Like, okay. That reminds me of that Office episode where, um, where uh, Dwight was like, um, be careful, watch your back or whatever, or 90% of attacks happen from the front or back, and Jim attacked him from the other side. You can still attack me. Ooh, ooh, you're cute. He offered out his hand, of course. I hesitated, but I took it anyway. I could feel his fingerless gloves as he gave my hand a tight squeeze. He had some coarseness, but it didn't bother me. It took us a good while to get back. I must have really wandered way far off than expected. Or he's just leading me a another way? A different way? Because I don't think she remembered her surroundings. The trees were becoming less dense, and I could see his traits more and more. His eyes were particularly striking. It gives a little hint of craziness. I like it. They are both different. I shouldn't be staring. Seems kind of rude. In fact, the whole time I've been acting rude, huh? Hey, um... Sorry for being kind of reluctant back there. <laughs> he simply shrugged and smiled at me. He's such a cute smile. Eh, I don't blame you. I mean, if, if I was in your position, I would have probably freaked out if I saw some random guy with an axe approach me as well. Hatchet. Sure. That seemed to be that seemed to get a laugh out of him and left let out some tension as well. It's been a while since I laughed. Nowadays it's been feeling like I have been so isolated. I'm surprised I could achieve a conversation with him, let alone other people. With time, the dirt path emerged with the edge of the sidewalk. Thank God we made it. What a relief. Yeah, he's cute. There you go. Oh my goodness. Thank you. I didn't notice that I was still holding his hand. He gave me a small smile before I stuffed my hands into my pockets. Other than having a breakdown in the woods, this entire experience wasn't that bad. I guess we can exchange numbers now. I'll see you around then. I mean, I'm not coming back to the woods, so I don't know about that. So we gotta exchange numbers now. He continued to stand in his place while I turned my back from the woods, walking into my neighborhood once again. Stopping at the front door, I gave him one last wave. I couldn't really tell from the distance, but he seemed to wave back. Oh, my room is cute too. I'm so tired. Oh look, the bunny! It looks like he's mad! He has little eyebrows! Exhausted, I immediately threw myself onto my bed, finally able to get some rest. My eyes, they feel heavy. That stranger, he seemed nice. Yeah, she wants to go back, huh? I didn't catch his name. I mean, his name is Hatchet. Or maybe Hunter, because in the beginning when it, told, when it said to put your name, it said Hunter. Mm. I'll ask him tomorrow. Oh, yeah, she's going back. Okay. My body is aching. It feels like someone's on top of- Oh, someone's on top of me. <laughs> I sleep for. It seemed way too bright to be early in the morning. I guess it must have been incredibly late when I slept. Last night, memory started flooding back to the encounter I had with that stranger in the woods. I feel some sort of mix of comfort and jitters sinking in. I had only moved in a few weeks ago, but now, knowing that he has been in the woods the entire time I've been exploring them, it was a little uneasy to process. It's like a part of my privacy has been to be fair, I do feel a little silly thinking that I didn't own the woods. If anything, I invaded his privacy by going off my usual path. Although, I haven't lived here for very long. I'm surprised I haven't heard about a man living in the forest. Then again, it's not like I really... It's not like I am really chatty with the neighbors who inform me about it. Was I thinking too much about this? Am I being insensitive? 
should I be feeling like I want to run into him again? I didn't ask for his name. Hmm, let me check my phone, because that's what I usually do when I get up. And before doing anything, I wanted to catch up on what has been happening. I mean, like, what if I go on my phone and suddenly get news? Hatchet Man killed three. Well, yeah. I only see one message. It was an unknown number. Ah, whack. This is Erica, by the way. Oh. Erica. I remember her. She's part of my class. I could recall we exchanged phone numbers because our professor recommended it. She was the one who approached me. Didn't talk to her a lot. She didn't seem like the type, but would casually answer questions in class. One thing that stuck out, however, was that she had an incredible style. She had an eye for colors and patterns from what I could tell. What class was I taking? It was like some kind of um, fashion style kind of class. Okay. It was surprising that she wasn't taking a fashion. Okay. <laughs> it was surprising that she wasn't taking a fashion course, but instead an interior design course. Erica was cool and seemed like she had her blank together. Chapter 4, with a groan, I forced myself up from the comfort of my bed. To be honest, it seemed better to do something than be slacking around in my sheets. This has been the first time I've been motivated to do anything in a while. That's kind of sad. Ding. Thanks. Smiley face. Question marks. Sorry, can you tell I don't text often? That made me smile just a tad. And I'm back the woods. Seems like a stupid decision to go back to the forest just to think some stranger. Dangerous, some might say. I mean, at least the sun was still out, so it wouldn't be as bad as staying in the woods at night, right? I mean, you got a point, I guess. I stuffed my phone into my pocket and prepared to get ready. I walked back into the familiar path. The cool air was sharp as ever. I could feel it nipping at the tip of my nose. He wasn't lying. He was getting firewood for this... I tried to recall the path I took that initially got me lost yesterday. Mm, okay. It didn't take long for me to fall back into a daze, feeling senselessly strayed. Alright, Lucy, just thank them, and you can go on your merry way to get some shut eyes. Simple as I mean, if you're gonna get lost again, he's going to bring you back, so. Okay, ulterior motives here. Thoughts started to speculate in my head the more I paced around in a frantic circle. Why am I being stupid? He should be here, right? Why did I think this was a good idea? It would be nice to have someone to share the woods with. What if he hurts me? Like he did. Oh, you're here again. Oh, thank god. It might have been my desperation, but the sound of his voice took off a huge wave of relief. I turned around too eagerly, seeing a smug expression on his face. He made me happy, in a way. He seemed to get easily lost. What if I wasn't here to help you? Out doe eyes. His comment made me play with the hem of my sweater. I could feel my cheeks starting to burn. Hopefully he didn't notice. Well, I actually came to see you. Why did I say it like that? I wanted to thank you properly, I mean. I know I already did last night, but I might have come off as crass, and I still feel bad about that whole ordeal. I started to ramble at this point. I need to get this over with before I come off as hysterical. So, um, thank you, uh, Alan. Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> I was way wrong. Hunter, no, Alan. I'm sorry. My name is Alan. Might as well get it off. May I'm sorry. Might as well get it out the way. Oh, well, thanks for helping me out, Alan. I gave his name a try. It came out softer than how I usually speak. I noticed him begin to smile, avoiding eye contact. Oh, are you getting shy? I was beginning to feel the silence beginning to start to grow. No problem. Besides, it is really sweet of you to come back just to tell me that. Oh, he was furring. It flattered me. I am blushing right now. It was kind of cute how he became so bashful then flirtatious so, so suddenly. I couldn't help but to smile back at him. We began to start a whole different conversation from there. At first, it was just regular small tech talk. Most of it is about me, of course. I told him what I did for a living and what I was currently studying. 
I don't even know what you do for a living or what you study. He seemed to be a good listener, or at least I think he was trying to be. He ain't got ears. It became evident that I kind of ran out of things to talk about. It was only fair to ask about him, right? I don't want to make it seem that I only like talking about myself. Not to sound rude or anything, but... I'm a little curious about your whole thing here. Oh. I know I just moved in, and it's none of my business, but why do you live all the way out here? How come no one has ever told me about you? He seemed to give some thought to my questions. He simply gave me a shrug. Don't know. I always figured I lived better on my own, I guess. At least that's what I think. So maybe he was a bit of a hermit? I totally don't mean to judge him. That's me. In a way, I kind of do feel for him not wanting to interact with others. He was just a little more on the opposite end. Maybe he thinks I'm the weird one for wanting to interact with him. It's not every day someone just comes back to thank you for helping them out of the woods. <laughs> yeah, he got a point. For a loner, he sure was easy to talk to. He was the one to first start a conversation better than I ever could. Hey, he snapped me out of it like he knew I was about to get lost in my thoughts. Wanna go check something out? I think you might like it. <laughs> what? I blinked. The way he worded it sounded very vague. And then look at the smile on his face. Um, I don't know. It depends. Are you gonna trick me and plan my murder? <laughs> Sounds very fishy of you, Alan. I joked and he seemed to get a good laugh out of it. <laughs> He's laughing because I'm right, huh? No. That's such a cute smile, though. It wasn't a very good joke, but it felt good to just laugh with someone. Maybe I needed this. I just needed to talk to someone. I mean, now you got me curious, might as well, right? Good. He seemed extremely pleased that I agreed. He took hold of my shoulder to guide me to the direction he planned to take me. We both took our time walking through the forest, having a whole casual conversation to make it up for it. It felt like being reunited with an old friend, trying to catch up on your lives together. It was nice. I began to share some stuff to Alan that I haven't been able to talk about for a while. In return, he told me little things about himself. I took notice of him trying to crush crunchy leaves under his shoes, sometimes getting bummed out if one didn't crunch. That's cute. Pretending they're skulls or something. It was kind of cute. That's what I'm saying. I noticed his skin looked slightly more sickly pale. Tiny, but still noticeable scratches across his cheeks. Probably because it's morning and I see it now. So this is pale, huh? Okay. And his eyes bore dark circles. It almost looked like he was about to collapse, but he looked so gentle. Oh, he needs sleep. He seemed to have noticed that I was looking at him. Oh no, I got caught. I ducked my head, scratching the side of my cheek. Before I could come up with an excuse that I totally wasn't staring at him, Alan pushed my head down, getting onto my knees rather painfully. What? Shh. Alan crouched down beside me, carefully moving closer to what seemed like a small stream, with wildflowers and vegetation almost like a mini meadow covering the entire land. A deer! Then I see a deer! It was happily nimbling on some grass and on occasion would twitch its cute fluffy tail. Both me and Alan didn't move a muscle, so as to not scare the cute creature, but we still enjoyed the view. Little cutie, I always come here to see if he's still around. So you can murder him? That was adorable. Who knew Alan had such a sensitive soul? Sensitive, huh? Okay. At least that's what I thought. It may not come as a surprise to you, but my favorite animals are deers. He likes to eat them, huh? Is that why you called me doe eyes before? Do I remind you of a deer, Alan? Like a deer in the headlights? Alan stayed quiet, a little taken back by my question. However, another sound stopped him from responding. Now that I think about it, you're thinking really deep into that because I did not connect the dots. Doe eye deer. Doe eye deer. <laughs> no idea. Okay. However, another sound stopped him from responding. He got lucky. Huh? They're new. Oh, she had babies? Another deer emerged from the wood, joining in. I couldn't deny that it was rather an adorable sight to see. Maybe it's more than one reason. What was that? It was barely a whisper. I could only manage to hear a few words from him. N nothing. Anyway, wanna grab a bite to eat? I know there's a store that's not far from here. 
Why not? I am getting peckish. He swiftly got to his feet again, not bothering to dust off his clothes. He still had the decency to hold out his hand for me to get up. Alright, we probably won't take long if we get going now. Much like before, he kept holding my hand through the entire walk back to civilization. It stopped feeling so foreign as if I knew Alan trusted him enough to hold hands. I don't know why he made me feel so safe. I feel melodramatic thinking about it. Everything seemed to get blurry and I could feel my stomach doing flips. It was then that- oh, he actually brought me somewhere, okay. It was then that the obnoxiously bright lights in the store pulled me out of the trance. It looks pretty. There were a couple of people in this small store, most of them adults collecting some boxes of beer. Alan started scanning around as if to memorize where everything was. Have you not been here before? What's this about? His attention was immediately caught by the ice aisle, his smile brightening like a child. Oh, you like ice? Pick anything you want. It's on me. Oh, it's on you! <laughs> okay. How can I serve him? I looked around and decided to get... I reached in the cold freezer, grabbing myself whatever seemed most appealing. Alan flashed me a smile. He seemed giddy that we got the same thing. Got everything? Yeah, let's go. Uh, we left the store basking in our glorious treats. Alan proceeded to scarf his ice cream down. You're gonna choke yourself eating like that. And that's how I wanna go. Here, Here lies Alan, death by ice cream. Ooh, what a way to go. He dramatically put his hands on his heart and lowered his head all gloomy. I snorted and playfully pushed him, though I could barely manage to make him lose his footing. Oh, he's strong. Yeah, okay. People would think you died from lactose then. I mean, I kinda am lactose intolerant, just a bit. <laughs> what? Why are you eating ice cream? And you took that risk? I like to live on the edge. What's with this face? I roll my eyes. No, seriously. I stole five chocolate bars while nobody was looking. Oh, you're bad, okay. What? I didn't even see you. He shoplifted. He gave me a proud smirk and zipping his coat, showing me his loot. I was dumbfounded. I couldn't believe it. This man just robbed a store. How did I not even notice him? He must have been real sneaky and quick. He's used to this. What is with that face? to see the look on your face right now. <laughs> oh no, look at the look on your face. He reached in, grabbing one from his stash. You can't just... That isn't... I said it was on me. They aren't gonna waste their time over some... Like stolen candy. Besides, his fingers fidgeted with the wrapper, prying it open and taking a bite before nudging it towards me. A little bite won't hurt. Stolen stuff tastes better. Hesitantly, I reached over and took the tiniest bite. I couldn't explain it, but he was right. It was like the forbidden candy bar. Still, I feel kind of bad that he went out of his way to steal stuff from me. Mm, take a little bite of mine. It only seemed fair, right? It was the least I could do. I motioned my ice cream towards him. At first, he gave me a confusing look, but soon got the hint. Uh... uh, 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 uh uh, <laughs> uh, he leaned down, accepting my offer. Unknowingly, he grazed the top of my hand as I held the ice cream. What is with the CG? Oh my goodness. Um, or maybe he did. I could feel him tightening his grip slightly as he looked up at me. I could feel the tips of my ears beginning to heat up. I couldn't look. I could not look anywhere else besides his gaze. You have good taste, doe eyes. Oh my goodness, he's making me blush. He only smiled at me before walking away and continued to eat his forbidden chocolate bar. Hey. I followed him soon after. We walked all the way back to my house, eating the stolen candy. I got some sort of cheap- wait, he knows where I live now? I got some sort of cheap thrill knowing we could have potentially gotten caught and Alan shared that feeling as well. Being with him was thrilling. I didn't notice how late it had gotten since I soon reached the comfort of my bed. I felt tired, sure, but I also feel satisfied, at ease. Whatever I felt, I knew I was going to see him again tomorrow. Huh? I open my eyes, but I can't see anything. I'm scared. I try to feel around, but nothing appears to be in front of me. Okay. 
fingers start tightening around my throat. Okay. I started to claw desperately. My lungs feel like they're about to collapse. Um, oh, holy crap. What a way to start the morning. Nah, I'm checking my messages. <laughs> Christ's sake, it isn't even a person that woke me up, it said it was some emergency alert? Something about another missing- okay, here we go. Another missing person. Seems like it's out of my control. Did y'all hear him breathe? <laughs> my head was pounding and I felt incredibly drained. The time reminded me that I only got a measly three hours of sleep last night. A half empty bottle of sleeping mess on its side. I did not want to get up. Wait. Sleeping meds by her side. I thought the walking tuckered her out and stuff. Okay. I wanted to see Alan though. Me too. <laughs> I wonder what he was gonna plan today. He had an act for keeping me on my toes and surprising me. He makes me feel warmth every time I think about him. It was kind of strange, but it was charming in a way. Well, if I was ever going to see him, I might as well get ready. Despite the rough morning, I didn't feel quite as tired as I did before. It could be because I was pretty much looking forward to meeting up with the local cryptic man I met just two days ago. It was certainly worth getting lost in the woods just to hang out with Alan. Much better than wasting my time being cooped up inside my house. Water bottles and dirty laundry taking up space. Alan! Right on cue. I see Alan from a distance waiting for me. I presume. He appeared to be playing around with his hatchet before noticing my presence. He was just playing with his hatchet? Okay. He cutely waved at me with the biggest grin on his face. So hatchet in hand. Okay. Did he always have sharp molars? Yeah, it's pretty hot. Um, Lucy, you made it. Hey, Alan. Sorry if I was late. Not really. You're right on time, actually. Really? Uh... I figured because of my lack of sleep, I would have arrived later than expected. Alan rested his arm, his hands on his knees, trying to get at my eye level. He was really close. Oh, so I'm short and he's tall. Interesting. Ready for what I have planned for today? He flashed me a hopeful smile. How could I say no to his excitement? Yeah, let's... Before I could answer, my phone went off. Uh, sorry. It feels rude to answer a phone call while Alan is around waiting for me to answer. But what if the call was something important? Hey. Hey, what's up? Oh, he doesn't look happy. Immediately after speaking, I looked over to Alan, who seemed to have an annoyed expression on his face. What's wrong? Sorry if I'm bothering you at the moment. I know it's the end of the week, and trust me, I want nothing more than to shun the rest of the world as well, but... But... I want you to meet me at the park, is that okay? Uh, okay. I don't see why not. Erica might have needed something from me. It wouldn't be cool to leave her like that. Sure thing. Can I bring a friend over? My eye, my eyes hovered over to Alan. Did I not see his face or something? What? His annoyed face smiled brightened when I mentioned Oh, what a cutie. Although, once I took my eyes off of him, I could have sworn that his smile dropped once again. As long as you get here. As long as you get your hermit butt over here, I don't see the harm. Don't be late or I'll end up ditching you. I couldn't tell if she was joking or not. She has a strange sense of humor that sometimes flows over my head. We both hung up and I looked back to Alan. His displeased face was replaced by a curious one. Well, he appeared to be looking at my phone. Guess I have gone for a while. What? My phone? You've never seen a phone before. Oh no, not that. I do have a phone, but I bet it's a flip phone. Alan proceeds to reach in his back pocket, pulling something out. It was a phone. An old flip phone, of course. I haven't seen those bricks for what seemed like forever. Mine isn't as cool as yours. He smiled bashfully before putting his phone away. Wow, you need to get caught up with the current times, Alan. Our phones do much more stuff now. Flip phone's pretty sus in this day and age, okay. Uh... That's incredible. We both started to walk to the park as I showed him all the apps I had. Being in the woods, there wasn't any steady signal, so showing him any type of social media was thrown out the window. Nevertheless, he was still impressed as I bombarded him with new information. If what he said was true, then he must have been off of society for a long time. A really long time. 
Why was he in the woods? What happened to him? I didn't realize that huge scar on his arm. I noticed, though. Were those stitches? Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh, Alan, what happened to you? Both me and Alan continued to talk about our day as we made our way to the park. I wonder why Erica wanted me to come. We didn't have to study or do anything class-related, which is what she usually calls me for. She probably knows. She told me that she doesn't usually date classmates or hang out with them outside of class because, well, too many guys thought they had a chance of borrowing my bras and were disappointed after I had the gall to reject them. Huh? <laughs> what? Um, what if she's like stalking me and she's worried for me or something? Maybe that's why she called me out? I don't know. Yikes. Probably why she decides to approach me rather than any of the male classmates. Lucy. A voice I didn't recognize called my name. Is she gonna have a picture? Alan puts on a displeased look, his eyes watching their side of the park. I could see two people, one I could immediately recognize as Erica. The other person, however, I've never seen him before. Why you look like that? Are you jealous? How did he know my name? Oh, so you all look like that. Ew, are you jealous? What is this? Oh my god, Lucy! Uh, hi. This guy was sure eccentric. She does not look pleased. What is going on? Everyone's face is different. From the tone of my voice, you could tell I was confused. Do you not remember me? He sounded kind of disappointed. Jeez, dude, now you're making me feel bad. I gave him a good long look, the hamster wheels in my head beginning to move. Actually, Stu? The guy gave me a smile and a wink. Right on. Oh my goodness, it was him. I could see the life nearly draining out of his eyes. I could barely hold my excitement in. Stu was a good friend of mine back since we were kids. Why did you bring him? Even before the two of us attended school together, we knew each other. It was when I left for college. We kind of lost touch. He's so short. Cutie. Why couldn't you just greet me yourself, you bozo? I wanted to surprise you. What a guy. He always has something up his sleeve. He seemed quite as pleased as I was. I didn't think I would have missed him so much. Oh, I totally forgot. I've been so caught up with Stu and Erica, I seem to have just left Alan out of the conversation. I think he noticed that. Yeah, his eyes do look different compared to everyone else's. However, by the look of his face, it didn't appear that he wanted to be a part of this. <laughs> He's a hermit. He's, he doesn't like talking to people. I kind of felt bad. This is Alan. Hey. His tone was very uninterested. The three remained silent after Alan greeted himself. <laughs> Erica had this look in her eye. Ooh. Erica's very pretty, though. I couldn't tell what she was thinking, but she appeared to be deep in thought. Please, somebody break the silence. Look, Stu is laughing. He's smiling over there. Let him break the silence. Should I be quiet and make it more uncomfortable, or should I say something? They want me to say something. I'm going to be quiet. Holy crap, this is not going as planned. I mean, what was the plan here? She brought... No, where did he come from? The uncomfortable air is beginning to be too much for me. I heaved out a shaky breath. <sighs> and another, and another. It was at this point Alan took hold of me with a stern look on his face. What's up? Oh, you're mad. Without a word, he took me away. So nobody said anything, huh? Okay. Without a word, he took me away from the park. He wrapped his arms around me protectively. Interesting. I can't explain why, but him being so close to me like this brought me comfort. Oh, that smile's not giving me comfort. Oh, okay. He gave me a comforting smile, which I also returned. That's not a comforting smile. Wait, Lucy. Wait, wait, Lucy. Oh, y'all follow me. Y'all are worried for me. I look back, seeing Erica running up to me. Stu right behind her. Why didn't y'all talk back then? I do feel bad for leaving them behind at the drop of a hat. Alan looked at me, shaking his head disapprovingly, as if telling me that talking to them wasn't worth it. I'm gonna tell him. I don't know what I'm telling him, but I'm telling him something. I can't just- now I decide to talk. I can't just leave them like this. I gave them a reassuring smile, which they both returned. I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. I'll see you guys around. I think he's about to kill me. Y'all don't leave me alone, please. They seemed worried for me, but still respected my decision. I'm out of here. Where are we at? Is this your house? What are you watching? 
that looks like another video game character I've seen, and if it is, that is a game I'm going to play in the future. I tried to relax, tried to distract myself. I'm scared. I was bundled into a ball at the end of my couch. Alan's sitting on the other side. Why are you in my house? The song is creepy too. The living room is dark with only the light of the TV giving any light. My attention wasn't on the TV, however. He's scaring me. I hope he's not just watching me like that on the couch. It was towards Alan. Okay, I'm watching him too. His eyes stayed glued to the screen before he shifted them in my direction. I don't think you've seen TV before. This is the second time I've been caught staring at him. I averted my gaze immediately. I must have been weird to him. You okay? I'm sorry. Are you so upset about what happened? What happened? I didn't want to really answer, but my silence was deafening. I'm being stupid, sorry. I don't know why I got so upset. I couldn't control it. When was I upset? I could see- wh wh Why are you in my house? I could see him softening his face at the corner of my eye. I didn't know why I started rambling to him, but I did. I suddenly felt a weight on top of me. Is it like the one you feel in the morning sometime? I was being pushed down onto my back. Ugh. Alan had pinned me. His hands gently wrapping around my wrist. Okay. Lucy. Oh, oh, I'm scared. You know you can tell me anything. Alan. My heart started to pound and I felt him starting to come closer to my face. I went stiff. Um. I'm gonna go for it. I'm going to kiss him. I pressed my lips against his. He seemed to be taken back by surprise, but leaned into our kiss. It was deep and passionate. Alan then pressed up against me and I could immediately feel his... His knife? No, his excitement. I really like ya. No, I... I could tell. I shivered. His breath tickled the lobe of my ear. You have no idea how you make me feel. Every time I look at you, my heart swells. It's like I want to hold you and never let you go. Ever. His choice of words made me feel something. Although it sounded a tad possessive, he made me feel wanted and cared for. His hands start trailing from my wrists, making their way all over my body. Yeah, let's keep going. Alan peppered kisses from my jaw to my collar. Everything about you is perfect. I want to treasure you. You are the only good person in my life. How could he even speak like this with no sweat? Um, is he ran through or something? Is that what the line? Just hearing those words made me look away in embarrassment. I suddenly feel his hands take hold of my face, pulling me towards his direction. He's going to kill me. Look at me, two eyes. I want to see your reaction. I'm scared. He shouldn't be this good. Arousal started growing inside of me. One quick swift motion, he hooked my pants and underwear to my ankles. His mouth was hungry and ravenous, leaving kisses at the exposed skin of my thighs. Then I felt something sharp. Are you biting me? I didn't get an answer, but I could feel the curling of a smirk forming against my inner thigh. He's eating me. The only response was another bite, sinking his teeth deeper. He was trying to mark me multiple times. You're all ready, just for me. Is a few little bites all it takes, do I? He could have gotten a retort out of me, but I was stopped when he pulled up my hips towards his face and ran his tongue. Who knew you would taste so sweet as well? His mouth started to work and in desperation, my hands focused on running down to his head where I took fistfuls of his brown hair. The tiniest touch of his whether it would be a graze of his fingertips or his tongue was pushing me a little closer to the edge. I could feel the heat building up like a low burn at the pit of my stomach. He then detached himself. Alan, I don't want to finish just yet, do I? I want more of you. He removed himself from me, hastily removing his clothes. It seemed that he was as desperate as I was. I sure wasn't complaining. He got rid of his turtleneck, t 
tossing it off to the side. My eyes couldn't help but to wander to admire his bare chest. That is until, oh my goodness, I saw a scar, a huge scar. In fact, his whole body was covered in injuries. He was in way worse shape than I expected. More scratches, cigar burns, and again, the scar at the side of his abdomen. It didn't look fresh, but still, how long has he had these before? Alan, what happened to you? Oh, these. He looked away from my gaze, brushing one of his scars. Some of these are from childhood. Others are more recent. We both stood silent, with my concern still weighing down. Don't worry about it. Alan, these are clearly not simple scratch marks. Are you hurt? It's okay, doe eyes. I swear they didn't even hurt. What? What is he going on about? It kind of makes it seem like he did it himself, but I know that it's not, right? It's okay. I'll, I'll explain later. Just please, let's keep going. I want you right now. Oh my goodness. Okay. I shouldn't push it if he doesn't want to talk about it. Okay. It's okay, doe eyes. You can relax with me. He was soon all over me again, positioning himself between my legs, his hands prying them open. I could feel him. We can take it nice and slow. I want you to want me. All in one go, I feel him buried inside till the hill. I couldn't help but let my breath hitch. <sighs> Held you up pretty good, huh? Who? His hips began to move along with mine. The movement first started slow and quickly, built up speed. Gosh, she feels so good. Can you feel me? All the way in. His mouth went towards my neck, attacking any spot that might cause a reaction. Sure enough, he did. He didn't give me any time to process, but I don't care anymore. I just wanted him. I needed him. Look at you. You look so amazing like this. I can't believe. Each word he spoke was followed by a rough thrust. Each time I could feel my mind getting fuzzy. I can't believe I get to keep you like this. You're all mine. 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 I was his. All his. He was rough and I could see him baring his teeth, almost animalistic. No, no eyes. <laughs> I love you. My mind went blank. He held me tightly as something warm began to fill me. He grunts and we both lie sweating, catching our breaths. My hand drifted up to his brown hair and I slowly began to stroke it. We must have stayed for a good few minutes, holding each other. Hey, I got an idea. Do you plan robbing the convenience store again? Alan got up from my chest, rolling his eyes. I'll leave that for another day. But no, I think you'll like this much better. He took my hand and guided me back to the woods. What if he just leaves me stranded now? It was a bit of a walk, like most of our little get-togethers, but for some reason, it felt longer than before. Why was he at my house? I'm still stuck on that. Great. Oh, so you just trust him now, too. Okay. Gradually, the trees became sparse and patches of the night sky peeked through the branches. We were going uphill, having a bit of a hike on our way there. He seemed to have, no he seemed to have noticed that I was getting fatigued. If you want, I can carry you. It's no bother. Oh, you're strong? Okay. Carry me. <laughs> It seemed a little silly, but I wouldn't mind. I raised my arms up, motioning him to pick me up. In real life, I don't want nobody carrying me, though. He smiled at me and just as quickly lifted my body, carrying me, bridal style. You're incredibly cute. Oh, stop! <laughs> Shut up. See? Oh, look at your eyes. You have stars in your eyes. Why are you so cute? Oh my gosh, look at your hair. Sorry. We both lay down on the soft grass. The sky was completely bare of any clouds and the darkness of the woods made the tiniest dust and stars twinkle brighter, right in his eyes. It was so nice and cool out here. I looked over to Alan, eyes glowing with awe. It made me smile, seeing him like a kid in a candy store. What's your favorite? Hmm? Constellation, I mean. What's your favorite constellation? Oh no, oh no. I'm gonna say my zodiacs. I feel like if I say, um, 
I don't know. He's not going to like me, so I'm going to say my zodiac sign. My favorite constellation is my zodiac one. Really? Which one? Capricorn. Could y'all tell I was a Capricorn? Oh. Oh, you are? Wait, is he really? Oh, I'm a Capricorn too. If you are, I am. Huh, neat. That's all she had to say about that. Okay. Pretty neat. Yeah? Which one is your favorite? Orion. The hunter one? Why is that? The story behind it is cool. And I share the same last name. Alan Orion. That's your full name? Alan simply gave me a nod, sighing peacefully, taking in the fresh air around us. So, Mrs. Orion. Okay. Alan Orion. Um, you sure know a lot about constellations, huh? Yeah, ever since I was a kid. This was probably the first thing I know something personal about him. My eyes went from looking at the stars to the stitched scar of his arm. Alan. Hmm? About those scars. Oh. I see a smile drop and I immediately feel bad for bringing it up. I'm sorry, I know you probably don't want to talk about it, but it's okay. You're just worried about me, right? I gave him a nod laying on my side. Looking over to him, I gave him a few moments for him to collect his thoughts. He finally spoke up. Well, to start off, most of these scars are recent, only due to me and my recklessness. Are you lying? Like, <laughs> like trying to feed a bear. Alan, I know, I know, it was dumb. Extremely dumb. I lightly punched his arm as if it was some sort of punishment for putting himself in danger like that. He only retaliated with a soft chuckle. He's so cute. His smile faded, however. Not all of them are new, though. Yeah, I could tell. He shifted uncomfortably. I gave him another moment. I was kinda a troubled kid. Got bullied a lot. Well, I got pretty tired of it that I got physical. Okay. So, those cigarette burns were from your bullies? Your kids were smoking cigarettes? No. They were from my older brother. You have a brother? He did that to you? I have three, actually. This was spinning my entire world. I must have been through a lot. Is that why he's in the woods to escape from it all? We were pretty dysfunctional. Mom was constantly in and out of the hospital, so two of my older brothers had to take care of us. The oldest, he burnt cigarettes on me whenever I would win in a fight, telling me I finally became what I was meant to do. It was to fight back and not let others push me. I'd hate to say it worked. Oh, Alan. What about your other brothers? The second eldest wanted to pretend that everything was fine and ignored our problems. He was desperately trying to be like the dad of our group when I didn't need one. I wanted a brother. He heavily sighed after his rant. I kept myself quiet to let him continue. My youngest brother. I got along with him at first, but... He wasn't the worst out of all of them, but we had a fallout. I'm sorry. It's alright. They were nothing compared to my school life. I got called Crazy Eyed Alan by my entire class. Aww. And she was talking about his eyes at first. I only gave him a sad expression, feeling incredibly sorry for him. I scooted closer to him, practically touching his shoulders. I can't imagine how long he must have endured it. One instance in particular pushed me over the edge. That day, I decided to drop out of school, leave my family, and never look back. We both stayed silent, continuing to look up at the night sky. I always thought I was meant to be alone. I didn't like being around people. I started to feel his hand starting to brush against mine. That was until I met you, no eyes. Oh, look at that smile. He took hold of my hand, squeezing it tightly. It made my heart race. Alan. I'll look over to him, meeting his eyes, giving me the softest expression I have ever seen from him. Um, I think your eyes are beautiful, or I'm glad to have met you. Um, this one was gonna be my first choice, but I'm kind of leaning towards this. Um, I think your eyes are beautiful. I think you have very beautiful eyes. A smile slowly creeped on him. 
and I could see his face reddening. Thank you. I think I should go back home now. Alright then. When can I go to your house? We both got up from our spot. I stretched out my arms, feeling a yawn coming up. Alan noted, standing beside me. Let me carry you. It's fine, Alan. I'm just a little tired. Before I could get on my feet, I felt his arms hook around my legs and back and proceed to pick me up from the ground at ease. Hey. He gave me a smile, holding me closer to his body. I insist. I gave in pouting on the way there before my eyes began to grow heavy. I leaned onto his chest, making him my personal pillow. I'm resting my eyes. Oh, she trusts him a lot. Oh, I'm back in bed. Okay, it was good that I trust him. I could barely tell what was going on around me, only feeling my body being set down on something soft and comfortable. I smiled, cuddling up to something soft I could find next to me. Before I drifted off to sleep, something warm pressed against my cheek and I heard Alan's voice. Good night, doys. Alright, so that is it for my dear hatchet man for now. Remember, if you like the video, please give it a like. And if you subscribe, you're able to see more of my videos. Also, leave a comment for another game that you would like to watch me play. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed.